lost the countdown, so now I don't know if we're live. I think we're live now, so we'll just start it. It's just my face, so they can't see you, Brad. Um, but they will be able to see you because we have an awesome interview here. Again, another awesome interview in digital marketing for entrepreneurs with Brad Newman, who has closed over seven figures in contracts this year. Um, working, I could probably say both their names, working for Scott Olford and uh, Sam Ovens. He has uh, made me purchase over $50,000 <laughs> worth of products this year. I'll put that out there too. Uh, so that's why I wanted to bring him on for you guys. Ask your questions away. He is a sales fucking master, but I will bring Brad on right now. What's up, Brad? It's good to be here. <laughs> That's all I got. That, that's all I got. That's all I got. The part where you said I made you do fifty thousand dollars in sales. Did I say I made you, or you made me? Yeah, you did. You, made, you persuaded me, and it worked out. It's all been a great return on investment. I'm so fucking excited that you did sell me into fifty thousand dollars worth of programs this year. So, guys, if you have any questions on sales throughout the live, drop them down below. If you're here, give us a hashtag live. Mike, what is up? Thank you for always being here and thank you for always being supportive. I love your face. Um, and if you enjoy anything during this live, of course, smash the fuck out of that heart button and hit that like button. We always like them. But I want to start with your story, Brad, because it is incredibly inspiring. I know there are a lot of people that go through hardships in life and they're like, oh, I just can't get through it. But you've gone through a lot, a lot of shit. And I just... <laughs> I want you to start there. So where were you at five years ago and how the hell did you get here? Oh, wow. Um, great question, Andrew. I love you. Thank you for having me on here. Um, where I was at five years ago, uh, what's 2013, I was in rehab at this time um, for drugs and for alcohol. I was uh, on suicide watch because I wanted to just give up. I didn't want to move on anymore. I didn't know if it was a drug problem. I didn't know if it was a Brad problem. What I did know was that I had this just existential uh, gnawing on the inside, this like spiritual void of purpose and um, alignment. And I just wanted to die, honestly. And so it came through drugs was like the easiest way. Um, I started using drugs because it felt good and they worked because I was going through a lot of angst. Um, with like family breaking up and bankruptcy in the, in the family. And my dad was an entrepreneur and owned his own business for 21 years. And he was in sales. He was the main sales generator for his company. And I saw how sales destroyed him because he got burnt out. And, um, and so like, yeah, five years ago today, I was literally in rehab um, thinking of one, is it worth it to live? Two, do I even have a problem? And, uh, Three, like, I don't even know what to do with my life. I have no, I, I'm broke, just graduated college, $1,000 in debt, student loan, um, living with my mom, um, and just searching the internet for answers. Like, I didn't know what I was searching for, really. I thought, I, I thought it was a money problem. I thought it was a relationship problem. Um, but uh, what I found was that it was a, a Brad problem. And so, yeah, so, I mean, I could go through that whole story. I don't know how long you want me to dive deep into that, but um, the shit, as you call it, was, um, man, I had a drug problem. I was hiding. I was isolating. No one knew, or I thought no one knew. Um, and I was just numbing myself uh, to oblivion because uh, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't, I just couldn't handle life on life's terms. Yeah. Um, and I've, through guided action and through a, a bunch of surrender, of uh, an open-mindedness, surrendering what I think I know is true versus what's actually true, and open-mindedness and willingness to do whatever the fuck it takes to get my life back together and to help others. Day by day, I just started doing like God, right? Uh, I learned good orderly direction. Mm. Just like stay focused, do the next right thing for the next right reason, and the next right thing will happen. And I just did that for years with the help of others. And, and now I'm here today. Um, it, it's yeah. incredible journey. I can give you a little more background of like how I actually made it into sales too. That's a, that's an interesting story as well. 
Yeah, and and I haven't heard you talk about good orderly direction yet. I really like that. But one thing that I got from you when we were at a, a mastermind together was just the word surrender. Just surrender to what is, what is in the moment, and to honesty and to trusting yourself. And that's been the most powerful thing that I've gotten from you outside of anything in business is just mm. surrender to what is, to like how you're feeling and how you move from there. Um, so yeah, like if you want to hear about more like crazy journey, deep shit, Brad does have a Facebook group and uh, I'm sure he's going to be sharing his story more and more on that. Um, but let's get into that. How did you move from that low point to how did you get into sales? Where'd you start? And ultimately, how did you align yourself with people like Scott Olford and Sam Ovens? How does somebody else do the same thing? Yeah, so there's that's a three-pronged question, and I will answer the, both, both of them directly. So my first journey in sales uh, first started actually as I was in recovery from drug addiction. Um, the best way to uh, just get out of one's own way, whether it's with drugs or just in life, is to serve others in their process that you went through. So I was helping about three years ago, I became a certified interventionalist and a recovery coach. So, um, and this was my way of serving the community that so freely served me to help me. Um, and so I would go into emergency rooms in the middle of the night, I would get the call at 3 a.m. Um, and someone had just died from a heroin overdose typically, um, brought back to life, and then they would call me to come and intervene and guide them to the next rehab. And so I would come into this weak, like crazy situation, nurses, doctors, administration, um, drug addiction and addiction services, like health insurance is all crazy there. And no one knows what to do, even professionals. And so I would just like get myself in an absolute peak of certainty and I would go in to these emergency rooms and I would literally be vibrating. Um, and I, it, the, the attitude I had that I was embodying was like, get the fuck out of the way. I'm going to help this person. I know exactly what's going on. And I'm not leaving until this person, I help this freaking person no matter what. And the sell, their persuasion was, I'm trying to persuade this person who loves drugs more than they love life itself. And I'm trying to persuade them to take a different course of action to not use their number one love of life and to go and surrender into a new way that could potentially help them get what they want. And so that was like, I, I kind of just stumbled into that just based on service and giving back. Um, and then one of my mentors just kind of presented it to me because I was like, I, I, it's so good and so heart feeling, but I was broke. Um, he's like, you know, you're like, you're in sales, you're doing persuasion, you're doing influence, like all influence in sales and persuasion is, is uh, a transference of emotion. Um, and he's like, you're doing that. All you got to learn is like the clicks and clocks differently of like the marketplace versus like the rehab and like that's it mm -hmm. and so i was like okay and so i meeting him i joined a 10k mastermind for my man brad hart and so i got plugged in with entrepreneurs and i to get aligned with like scott and himself uh, like others like sam ovens um all i did was re scott put out a post that was hiring and all i did Facebook Messenger cold message, baby. <laughs> I got him on Facebook Messenger and I enrolled him onto a call. I, all I said to him was, Scott, hey, saw your message. Um, if you're open, I would love to exchange uh, visions for about 15 minutes to see if we aligned. Let's hop on a 15 minute call and see if we can make something happen. And he was like, okay. I got on the call with him and he was like, well, what do you wanna do? I was like, I wanna sell. He's like, okay. And then boom, within, I sold him, he sold me. And then within a week, boom, same thing. I was working with Scott Olfer back 2017. Same I love thing. that. Dude, yeah. and that's a great script you just gave people there. Hey, yeah. let's hop on a 15 minute call and see if our visions align. So if you want to work with somebody that is doing big things in the entrepreneur field, boom, you have a script just to go out there and hit somebody up in Messenger, especially after a post like that. Yeah, really, really powerful to uh, an added benefit. Like everyone, like the law of attraction is exactly for like big influencer, anyone in business is 
obviously speaking your message into existence, but getting others to conspire for your own vision. So mm -hmm. the more people that you have conspiring for your vision, the faster it's gonna come true. And that's the same thing for the people that you wanna attract. If you wanna conspire for the person's vision that you wanna work with, tell them that. Mm -hmm. I want to make your goals and dreams come true. Um, mm -hmm. And so that I have a two prong approach of getting in front of influencers. Like it has, it's a hundred percent effective, a hundred percent of the time. Whip um, it out, dude. Whip it out. This is it's gold, and you're gonna be like, this is so freaking simple and stupid. I know this, um, but if you know it, knowing is not doing. So, yep. It's one, buy their shit, and be the fucking best at it, and they'll want to partner with you. I did that with Brad Hart. He's an influencer in the entrepreneur space. I bought his mastermind for five figures and I showed up and I crushed. And he want, now he wants to align with me in partnerships. Um, the second way is whoever you wanna align yourself with, make it an irresistible offer to make them a shit ton of money for their shit. Like, the reason why Scott trusts me so much is because I've collected more than a million dollars for him in 2018. Yeah. Like that's it. Buy their shit, be the best at it. They'll want to part with you because you'll, they'll see that you're such a gamer and two, make an irresistible offer. Mine has to be in sales, happens to be in sales. So the irresistibility is I just take commission and I will sell your stuff to the perfect person and ethically build your tribe. Um, for Sam Ovens, it was the same thing, man. Like, I just got a connection from someone else, right? A referral, a social proof of, hey, this guy sold for Scott Alford, he made $200,000 in one month, uh, integrity, all that. I hopped on the phone with Sam Ovens' and his team um, on a Friday. Like, I there was a list of 1,000 people. I jumped to the top of the line because I knew somebody, because I invested in his shit and made a partner with him. And so he vouched for me. And then on a Friday, I jumped like a thousand people responded to this post. Friday, 8 a.m., I hit up Sam's team. On 9 a.m., I was on a call with Sam's team. At 9.20, I accepted the offer. <laughs> so fast. Boom, you hear that? That's B-Heart <laughs> in the background. Like, Was that from your referral? Yeah, that's from, <laughs> that's from the referral. That's someone vouching. So it they intertwined really nicely like i invested in brad and what he was doing and i crushed it yeah and then i got access to his network because he trusts me to crush and so he had no problem vouching for me for someone like sam ovens and same way for scott olford it was buy people shit yeah crush it and then make them a lot of money that that's, that's the it. easiest way to grow your network is to buy somebody else's stuff like the network that you align with most just buy that person's stuff and then just start interacting with their network as much as possible, especially in a Facebook group. If they have a private Facebook group, just interact with them as much as possible. Just solve people's problems. Yeah. Don't, don't, I, the one suggestion I would say is don't overshadow the person who does the Facebook group. Mm -hmm. But if someone, if you're just like a tactical ninja man, uh, dude, you're going to be getting friend requests like, no other. I'm getting so many freaking friend requests after going through some of your program. I, I get 50 friend requests every single day because of just like one tactical stuff. I know my lane, it's sales and offer development. And yep. like people just like friend request me. And I'm like, I don't know what to do with you. I want to be your friend, but there's so many, there's so <laughs> many people. Exactly. Yeah. Just from interacting a little bit more in Facebook groups, it's kind of blown up. I think that um, I was actually thinking on this. Um, obviously when I go to bed, I'm always thinking about Facebook groups right before I drift off into sleep. <laughs> <I love that. laughs> That's been my life for the past year and a half. <laughs> it's so true. And I heard someone say this. It's like, man, like social media, you just got to be social. Ooh, I like that. Just be social. It's so true. Just yeah. get your content out there. Push it out. Even if it's shit, even if you think it's complete, don't put it, push out shit just on purpose. But even if you think it's shit, like put it out, test it out, especially starting out. That's way of being social. Yeah. I have a great, I, I say a lot of prayers um, and I have a great prayer for that because I pray before my sales calls um, and mm -hmm. especially about doing content. I don't know if you can see my whiteboard over here. 
So that's actually what I want to get into too. What do you do um, before your sales call to get you into state to ultimately help that person and close that deal? Yeah, that's a great question. Let me let me answer this one quote and, yeah. and it'll, it'll go right into, but with the content piece and the sales piece, the, the prayer is great creator, my God, I will take care of the quantity, you take care of the quality. All that I am responsible is for sh uh, sh suiting up and showing up and creating. My worry <laughs> is not about the quality because as more I create, the better the quality gets. And so I surrender the outcome to mm. the universe, but I must be in practice. I must be in reps. Um, and that's a prayer that I say to like surrender the outcome of the sales call and like how specifically do I get into a uh, state? So. My main intention to get on in, uh, into state on my sales calls is I need to be, or I am blessed to be at a 10 out of 10 certainty in that no matter what this person throws at me, I am able to stand there and be their guide and lead them and guide them and access whatever emotionality or flexibility I need to access to reach this person because everyone has gold. And so, my main intention is to get it at a 10 and 10 and then relax into it so that I can show up to the call, meet them where they're at, and then slowly but surely build them up to a certainty that at the close, we're literally both having orgasms. Like <laughs> that is how I conduct my sales calls. And I have most of my people that I've enrolled, like we've become like best friends. Like yeah. I, th there's something about the way, like that is such a powerful call. So. There's a couple ways specifically tactically take notes of how I get into state. Um, my first is breathing. When I was first starting off, um, my breathing, man, I was so freaking nervous to get on these calls with these strangers um, that I would breathing from my throat and I almost feel like I was choking and I was breathing from my chest and it was like anxiety inducing. So I noticed myself being like, and I would ask questions from there and it wasn't from a state of power. And so I now focus on my belly and my Dantian, big breaths. And like I do this exercise where I breathe in my nose and out my mouth and I pump my arms as fast as I can to oxygenate the whole body. And it kind of looks like this. And I do that for about 30 reps to one or two times. And the main intention here is to, if I wanna relax, I wanna get to a state of like, uh, uh, like a high state so that I can feel, have more orgasms, it's so funny. <laughs> I could get to a state of relaxation and power and I'm feeling in my body. So breathing exercises. Number two is rebounding. So if you don't have a trampoline, it's about 30 bucks on Amazon. Um, and what I'm doing here is um, we have lymph, we have lymph in our body, and there's three much three times the amount of lymph in our body. And when we're feeling tired and slow and lethargic, we need to jump in order to get that moving and that energy moving. And so again, you'll notice that my pre-call rituals have nothing to do with like, I'm gonna read my script over again. Right. If I'm not prepared for this, like I need to do preparation in the back to memorize this stuff. It's like an actor memorizing his lines and then trying to memorize his lines on set. Dude, you're too late. You didn't prepare. Piss poor preparation equals piss poor performance. Like, so I'm not reading my script. It's too late. It's like trying to study for the exam, like two yeah. seconds before. No, it's not doing. So I'm rebounding and I'm getting my body. I'm like literally sweating before my call. My next, and now I'm getting, so my body is centered, and now my third is, hold on one second, I wanna, sh I wanna show you my wall. So these, these are abundance checks to the universe. Um, and you can just get this on the secret.com. They're called grati the gratitude bank of the universe. And so, what I noticed for myself was that I felt responsible, personally responsible for someone's success or failure. And that comes from a, a state of attachment. And so I wanted to release that, uh, th that pressure to perform and to make sure to get the people the results. So what I do spiritually and intellectually now is I, everybody I get on the phone with, 
I write their name and I already write a check of whatever comes through. So 150,000, 250,000, 750,000 for this person in their name from the universe. The universe is now conspiring for them just because they get on the phone call with me. And so that releases all pressure for me to perform, dance, monkey, dance. It's like, no, I have a solution that could help. But just because you're in my presence, your wishes are already on my wall and already manifesting. Again, the law of attraction, having others conspire for their goals. So that gets me in a state of relaxation and high intention, low attachment. I'm very intentional with my care and my questions and how I show up but totally attached. The universe has got them and I have proof that that's so. And this is the last one. This is the most ninja shit. I learned this from Jordan Belfort, um, Wolf of Wall Street. You may think his ethics are terrible. They are, but his tactics are <laughs> sick. What he would teach his sales force, it's called boom, boom smelling. And so the, Sales honestly rise or dies on state of beingness and being in momentum. So I would, I every deal I close, it's called boom boom. Actually, every deal I close, right after I collect the credit card and it goes right through, I anchor that feeling, that rush, that like certainty, that power, right after that sale, and I anchor it with smell as hard as I can and squeezing my fists so that it literally is ingrained into my nervous system of the clothes. That's what I want to anchor in. I don't want to anchor in selling and rapport and conversation because that's not what actually moves people and moves the needle. It's the clothes. It's getting people to commit. So I anchor the commitment in. So that way, this is some ninja shit. What before every call, I sniff and I squeeze and I'm already in state of 10 out of 10. I, I already closed the deal in my body. I am or, like, it already happened. And I've done this so many times that when I sniff and I'm triggered, I literally like, it's a Rolodex. Um, the deals that came through, I see the money amount, the money amounts and the people that enrolled and I see the credit card numbers just through my brain. And I'm like, Oh man, I'm, Whoa, I'm back in frame. Like, I am amazing. I'm going to help this person. So, boom, boom, like anchoring through smell and through physical touch of closing a deal and then smelling right before you get on a call. If you do those four things, it doesn't matter if you have a script or not. You will show up in a way that people will be like, I don't know what this person has, but I want it. I, <laughs> I want don't know it. what he's smoking, but I want some. <laughs> it might be boom, boom. Or, or yeah, sniffing. That is, dude. Those are fucking amazing um, uh, tactics to use. Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. If you guys want to learn more of the strategies that Brad implements, or anything that has to do with sales, he just opened up a Facebook group called Sales Coaching for Entrepreneurs. If you guys want access to that, hashtag group down below, and we'll get you the link over to that Facebook group. I know it's going to be jam packed with super helpful information and you are just there to serve help and it's amazing amazing stuff so if you guys want access to that hashtag group down below um yeah, but the next thing Real quick, I'm, sorry. I'm giving in that group i'm giving everything away right if you need help with like an objection that's coming through i will i'm giving everything away of exactly how i would navigate that giving every way tactic, frameworks, mindsets, structures, strategies, overcoming objections, script. I'm giving away the freaking house um, because I noticed for me, sometimes it's just one piece of new information that's guided and clear that totally shifts everything. And that's my main intention here. I totally agree. And we got Brian once in, Cheryl once in, Cheryl number two, or they're both Cheryl. So both Cheryls are number one. Uh, Rupesh, uh, Alvin, Jason, Lawrence, guys, thank you for hashtagging group. We'll get you the link over to that uh, as soon as the live is done. Um, but the next thing I want to get into, Brad, is you said you were going to share the only sales framework a person needs to create growth in their business. So, what is that sales framework? This is simple. 
and you, you're gonna know this already, and I'm only here as a vessel to remind somebody of what it is. Love it. This, the, the sales framework is personal responsibility versus victim mentality. That's it. If you're not closing deals in the way that you're closing deals, or that you want to, if you're not generating the money that you wanna generate, there is a certain blind spot in your ownership of your reality, in the ownership of your business, in the ownership of the stories that you're telling yourself. Like whose fault is it if they're a perfect fit and they don't end up investing? Is it because they're a bad lead, that they didn't get qualified enough, they didn't know who you were? Or who, was it your responsibility to pre-frame them, to guide them along from problem aware to product aware to solution aware? Like how much personal responsibility and ownership are you taking in every single link in your business? How much responsibility are you taking to create a product or a service that will last a generation versus just creating a quick buck? And so, Anytime I'm coaching somebody, I had a coaching call this last week of he was a door to door salesman. He's now in high ticket sales for a company that sells anywhere from 2000 to 30,000. Like he's got the skills, he's got the heart, he's got the perseverance. Like what was the thing that was lacking or that was missing or that needed shifting? It was that it was their fault that I don't have my success. Mm. Mm -mm. The level of personal responsibility you take for yourself and your business directly reflects the outcomes of your business, 100%. And this exercise, I have an exercise, a tactical exercise, which I go through and I teach others go through. If something is not happening the way that you would like it to happen, there's blind spots going on in your life and open loops an excuse is happening unconsciously. There's no fault here. It just may be happening. You may have been told a story of how things need to be felt or said or rules in order for how things to be happen. So the thing is, this is the tactile exercise that will bring extreme awareness and it's going to be uncomfortable because you're turning the lights on of like who you really are and what's really going on. It's an inventory process of every open loop or thing that you said you would do and didn't do, or thing that you said to someone that didn't happen, or promise that you made that didn't fall through, or secret that you have that you're hiding, and literally writing it, a personal moral inventory of your actions, your behaviors, and your words, and exactly what's going on. Black and white, no story around it, but like, the thing, right? What do you say when you get off a sales call to yourself when someone doesn't, doesn't like enroll and you thought they should enroll? What are you saying to yourself? Mm. Is it, man, like they're stupid. I can't believe they didn't see the value. Or are you saying, man, I suck. I should quit. You need to write that down on paper, take the energetic muck out of that and just get real with it. And be like, this story is no longer serving me. This victim mentality of the market isn't resonating with my message. No, you're not resonating with the market. No one's joining my Facebook group. No, you're not giving enough value that's actually relevant. Mm. And once that shifts, whoo, and when you're ready to shift that, things just flow to you. Um, and it is a daily practice. It is a daily practice of responsibility and moral inventory of oneself. And I know it's not a business, business tactic because there's enough business tactics out there. Go on Google, Google a sales process, Google a script. It's there. Mm -hmm. Wow, I love that. Take more responsibility and notice those thoughts in your head especially what are ha what's happening after that sales call. Um, what were some of those things that you were saying to yourself after your first few sales calls that you have shifted? And what were the shifts that you make now after the sales calls? First shift. This is a 
a, this is an external locus of control shift, meaning it's an outward environment shift that needed to happen before I can even have a grasp over like shifting my thoughts and shifting my beliefs. The first thing was, holy moly, I need to fill my pipeline. Mm. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter all the mindset work that I have. If I don't have a half a dozen, a dozen people to at least talk with on a daily basis about solving their challenges and I'm stuck, I have one call all week. Woo, man, there's going to be some pain there. Like ride on, ride and die on like, I need to close this deal. I have rent coming up or like, I need a bill. Like I need this $5,000 contract mm. like, verse or even the opposite of like you, you enroll the person and it's like, Oh my God, I won the lottery. Everything is amazing. I'm loose. Like, mm, we want to be even keel. And so how do we get there first? It's an environmental shift of, we got to fill up that pipeline. We need sales calls in the calendar to roll right after each other. Fear feeds on time. The more time you have in between sales calls and revenue, revenue generating activities, man, that little devil, it's always sitting there and be like, you, you suck. You should quit. No one likes you. No one wants you. No, sales calls. Stack those sales calls, whatever it takes. Even if it's not a sales call, do a connection call. Like from the script earlier of like, get on 15 minute connection calls and make sure you're putting enough momentum and value into the marketplace that you starve that fear. So tactically, rejection is not real. Like that fear is not real if your pipeline is full. Like if I were to share my screen right now, I have 10 sales calls booked today right after this. And so it's like, I just got to roll with it. Yeah. So that's first external locus control, environmental shift that must happen. Number one priority is getting strategy sessions on your calendar. And you have a perfect framework of a Facebook group to do that. That's amazing. You have a pool of people. Like, just be interested and be curious. Yes, and we're gonna actually do a training later next week on how to fill up your Facebook group, a thousand people into your Facebook group. So that training is gonna be absolutely insane. So if you wanna fill up your calendar, be on that training. If you wanna be on that training, we'll hashtag training down below and we'll make sure that you are tagged on that. Tasha will tag you in that training. But keep going, Brad. Sorry. Yeah. Shameless plug. No, no, it's a perfect plug because a thousand, a thousand people. What do most people want to make uh, per month uh, uh, in your group? 10K? I think 10K. It, guys, we'll, we'll ask them, what is your, how much do you want to make per month? What is your ideal amount? But I think it's around 10K. And what's like an average offer? 1K, 2K, 3K? I think most people in here are agency owners, so they're selling packages anywhere from fifteen hundred to three thousand. Okay, let's go in the between. So, five people a month must say yes to your service. Standard KPI for sales of if you need to. This is the standard percentage is a twenty percent close rate. So, twenty five people you need to talk to in order to that are qualified in order to get to five sales 20% 20,000 now so let's go with 20, 20 yeah. 25,000 oh all my right god thank god 10,000 <laughs> i can roll into 10,000 and triple <laughs> um okay so if your package is still $2,000 um depending on how the value stack is built right you need 10 people and so at 20% close rate, how many, I don't do, help me do math. So if you need 10 people, you need 50 calls. Yep. 50 calls a month, man, this is so, that's like 10 calls a week. Yeah. 40, it's 12 calls a week, 12 calls a week. And you could have a thousand people in your group. What's 12, what's the percentage of 12 times a thousand? Uh, that's 12,000. 12, no, I'm sorry. It's that's, that's one percent of people in the thousand person Facebook group that you need to get on your call per week, and they're already loving what you do. One percent, 
Yeah. There are no excuses beside of abundance of people who are interested in what you're doing. They're already in your pool um, and creating value and creating conversations. And this is where you, Andrew, are attacked like a um, tactical ninja at. But just like that's all you need. You need 12 hours a week, 12 hours a week to make $20,000 a month. Think about that. That's not a lot of time. That's yeah. not a lot of time. Obviously, there's back end stuff, but like, there's nothing more important on generating sales calls and uh, creating a great uh, a product. Like, yep. so yeah, actually, go into that. You wanted to talk a little bit about uh, your product and your offer. Those are the two things you need. I forget exactly what you said, but um, sales start with a product and the offer. So actually what I wanted you to get into was you had like two, three days to ramp up to hop on uh, sales calls for Sam Oven's up-level product. How the hell did you go through that like 80 hours of content and how did you put in that into a sales framework that works where you are closing a very fucking high percentage for Sam Oven's now? How did you do that so quickly? Yeah, so um, that's a great question. So not gonna lie, working with Scott for a whole entire year, practicing with him helped the ramp up time because I already put a lot of reps in. I kind of already, I had a good understanding of the avatar of what their challenges are. Um, I had a good understanding of like, because I understand the avatar, I understood a little bit about business development and how all the pieces of a business kind of flows together. So, but how to train on the product, um, it is focus. And what I mean by focus is in three days, <clears throat> I eliminated, it's not about focusing more, it's about eliminating distractions. Mm -hmm. And I just went all in. And anytime I had a question, I would make sure I get it answered and write that question down. Anytime someone talks to me on the phone about the product or about the service, and I don't, if any question, I write the question down so that I can just learn it as quickly as possible. Like I ramped up with Sam. It was seven days. It was a seven day ramp up from going from Scott to Sam, learning the product, learning the avatar, learning the system. Um, and it's just a state of focus and extreme curiosity of like, how does this work? How does this work? Why, 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 why? And how do I learn the product? Well, I mean, this is what Sam Ovis teaches in up-level consulting, selfish plug, of like how to prescribe a program specifically versus um, like a course. Like there's certain high-level frameworks of the offer. Um, and that's actually kind of what I want to go through and give a little bit of tidbits on how I prescribe an offer for people. Um, before I do, the reason I want to do product first is because having – a product that gets results and comes like gets people the promise that was promised like that is 50% of the sales process like if you're finding questions of people asking you well how do i know this is going to work and you don't have testimonials and you're not constantly iterating your product and your service um, and your offer like that's your first step before enrolling more people into it you wanna get as much feedback from the people who already used it, decide if it, is it a product thing or is it a repositioning to the market thing? Maybe the product actually serves a different type of market and getting really clear on that before building out a whole sales system. Um, because typically when people ask product about Sam Ovens, it's just like, well, have you seen our 20,000 testimonials, our 3,000 testimonials? Like yeah. I'm not responsible for your research. Have you not done your research? Cause it's no, it's, and so that makes sales so freaking easy. So your sales process and the ease of which, with which that is done really comes from the effectiveness of your product and how great it is at delivering it mm -hmm. and how I prescribe my offer. Yeah. Um, I typically prescribe my offer in what I call stages that flow into one. Stage one, we're gonna go through this. Stage two, we're gonna go through this, which solves this, which you mentioned about this, and it gives you this. Stage three, stage four. And in those stages, what I call um, finish lines and prizes. 
And so I offer up a stage of how it's going to solve their problem. And then I let them know, you know, you're done with this stage at this point. It's very clear, specific, measurable. And the prize, this is what you're going to have in value after this stage is complete. Does that make sense? Yes. Great. In the next stage, this is what we go through that solves this problem and gives you this. You know you'll this stage is done at this point. And then this is what you're going to have in value at this point. And when I go through those stages and prizes and finish lines like that, well, I'm essentially, I'm value stacking. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, you're going to have a funnel and you're going to have a course and a product that creates, and you're going to have access to Sam's funnels that he spent $12 million developing over the course of five years. And all this is just X amount of dollars. Like, I clearly, like, I'm responsible for creating the vision and the value. I don't assume that they understand the value. I clearly articulate it and guide them through it. So again, mm -hmm. it's it's the stage. I would get, I have, I would have like a name. Yep. It's, it's the finish line, how you know you're done with this stage. And if it's an agency owner, it's the same thing, right? This is what we're gonna do in your business. And the, the checkpoint that we know this is done is at this point, yep. could be a time frame, could be an asset, could be a monetary thing. And yep. this is the prize you're going to have for a lifetime after it. Yeah. People are super clear and they're like, oh my God, just please. That's exactly what I'm searching for. Can I have it? And I'm like, yeah. maybe. No, you can have it, of course. <laughs> that's that's awesome. how I lay out offers. Yeah. I love it. Um, the thing that I do, I, I think I got it from Frank Bria, but it's, it's essentially the same thing. So it's the pain, the promise, and... Um, and the process, the three Ps. Mm. So the pain, you gotta understand your uh, ideal client's pain really well. You gotta understand where you're ultimately taking them, like what's their ultimate vision, their ultimate goal, and how can you help them achieve that is through the promise, which bridges the, or not the promise, the process. The uh, process bridges the problem with the promise. So you have those stages, those, those three steps, those five steps, those seven steps people go through. And to add on top of that, Brad, if you have a, uh, a prize at the end of each step, like a clear finished goal at the end of each step, that just makes it even more powerful. And I freaking love that, man. That was really yeah. good. And it makes everyone accountable in the process of like, well, how do I know it's going to work? Well, <laughs> do goals work, right? Do vision, like do checkpoints work? Like, yes, they, that's how they work. Yeah. Because we need clear, specific, measurable, predictable checkpoints through the ultimate vision. Mm -hmm. um, and so it just gives you as the person who on the other line prescribing of so much clarity for that person. And that concept I also got from Frank Bria as well. Yes, I plug in. <laughs> I love it. Yes, I love he's, it. He's a ninja. He's amazing. Uh, Dustin is saying this is solid teaching. Brad is right course you're always fucking right brad i fucking love this um if you guys want to learn more from him hashtag group down below you get access to his group where he's not holding anything back he's just simply here to help you guys as much as possible and his sales trainings are freaking amazing and he provides scripts and all this amazing shit so hashtag group down below if you want access to that we have a few minutes left here um so if you guys have any questions brad will just rapid fire answer them um, but this has been freaking amazing so far, Brad. Thank you so much for being here, dude. Um, I want to end my last question off on you've gotten to this point where you are financially freaking stable. What is your you you've left uh, uh, you've left like survival mode and now you're going to thrive mode. So what do you want to bring to the world? when you're in this thrive mode? Oh, that's such a good question. That's such a good question. Um, I think what my, my highest calling and intention is, um, is to um, help the youth. Not really sure what that specifically is, but I know mentorship in the area that we're doing, like at, at our age and, you know, just like adulting, um, late 20s, early 30s, like mentorship is so important for us. And I can't even, like, when I was younger, 14, 15, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, so freaking impressionable. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I have this wealth of experience from 
like devastating. I'm literally killing myself. Institutions like drug rehabs, just like deprivation to the core. And I have a spectrum of now I'm thriving and like I have all these wonderful outside things. Um, and I have also beautiful inside things of spirituality. And like, I just want to give that to the youth. Mm -hmm. I don't think the youth are broken. I just think they need mentors. Mm -hmm. like we all do. They just need mentors who have gone through, who understand and who are emotionally available for kids who are just like hormonal, man. They don't understand, dude. Like they're, they're just like, they're trying to figure out life. And uh, I think my, like my calling is to mentor children. My first calling was to be a teacher and it, things happen and manifested differently. But now because um, I am like in this like cycle of like thriving and it feels really nice, mm. um, man, it's, it's, it's the kids. It's, yeah. it's the kids. Yeah. Dude, I love that so much. And like, I kind of fell off track in college, like hitting that youth group of high school through college where kids are just trying to figure this shit out. Like that's a big thing for me too. Um, yeah. Hassan, Hassan is saying millennials. Yeah. Like right now, millennials definitely need hashtag millennials need help. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I love that so much, man. So uh, we have um, a question that I'd like to get answered before you have to hop off. I think you got five minutes left. We're good. So G Daniel is saying, hey guys, I just joined. Uh, what's a way I can book an appointment from walking in cold and having the decision maker come out? What can I say? Walking in cold, meaning to someone totally, totally cold. Is that what I'm assuming saying? what he is doing is going into brick and mortar businesses and saying, I think he runs an agency. Um, if you could confirm that, that would be great. But walking in and saying, Hey, I have a Facebook ads agency. Let's strike a, let's strike a deal. Okay. I got some ninja stuff for you and it's not going to come for me. I want you to go to YouTube, search Jordan Belfort, straight line persuasion, Module four, Jordan Belfort, Straight Line Persuasion, Module four. Man, he get he was doing door to door after his company went under before he went to jail selling mortgages, and he closed fifty thousand dollars in contracts in two hours going to brick and mortars. Just ba 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 ba, and he explains exactly how he uses his tonality his rapport building and his question asking one going door to door uh, that got people, boom, he would just book people. Um, and so that's a whole lesson that's an hour long that I can't teach right now, but that's where I would steer you right there. Totally for free, Jordan Belfort, module four, straight line persuasion. He'll teach you everything you need to know. Damn, gold. I'm actually going to watch it now. It's, it's, <laughs> uh, that is amazing. Guys, if you want more amazing content from Brad, hashtag group down below. Um, we will get you the link over to Brad's group, Sales Coaching for Entrepreneurs. It is absolute fire. This has been absolutely amazing. I'm going to buy a boom boom stick and sniff some boom boom. By the way, where can I get that? Amazon. Amazon? Class. Just search boom boom Amazon. Awesome, guys. If you love this, smash the fuck out of that heart button. Hit that like button. Give us hashtag value down below. All of that helps us reach more people, get more engagement so we can help more people. And Brad, you have a sales call right now, so I'll let you do your uh, bouncing, your uh, look, at, stare at your checks, and sniff your stick. Uh, so, dude, thank you so much for being here. And uh, yeah, man, everybody else, thank you for being here. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate you, and I appreciate everyone who